by special recording. General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, and Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, presents The Lone Ranger. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. This is the Lone Ranger. If you want to be a champion at anything, remember, others have done it in spite of obstacles. Take rodeo champion Bob Maynard. He did it the hard way. He proved champions are made, not born. Bob didn't even have the advantage of growing up on a western ranch. As a boy, he lived in Chicago. But Bob started riding when he was eight years old. At 14 in California, he became a stable hand. Today... Bob Maynard is one of the top money winners in rodeo competition. He sure is, Lone Ranger. And like many champions in all sports, Bob still chooses Wheaties for his favorite training dish. There's no question about it. Champions are made, not born. And there's no question why champions choose Wheaties for their training diet. They want that famous wheat energy. They get it with Wheaties because there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tato, rode through the hills to the town of Masilla. They followed a branch trail which led to the main river trail. As they topped a rise, Tonto suddenly exclaimed, Look, Kimo Savvy, stage come up river trail. It moved plenty fast. Yes, too fast for that dangerous trail along the edge of the river canyon. I don't understand why the driver doesn't. Tonto, there is no stage driver. The horses are running away. Monsilver! Monsilver! Racing at top speed, the masked men and Indian rode to intercept the runaway stage. Monsilver! Faster, big fellow! Get off, scout! <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Toto reached the main trail just as the runaway stage approached. The two men ran their horses alongside the leaders of the team. Ho, 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 ho. They grabbed the bridles of the two leaders and gradually brought the stage to a stop. Easy, steady, easy, steady now. Me whole team, Kimasami. I'll speak to the passengers. Mister, I don't know who you are or why you wear that mask, but you saved our lives. Yes, I was frightened. I thought we'd go over into the river. Thank you so much. I'm glad we were nearby. What happened to the stage driver? I'll tell you what happened. We struck a big rock a ways back. The driver stopped and got down to see if the wheels were all right. Something startled the horses and they just lit out, leaving the driver behind. I'm Geraldine Ames. I'm sure my cousin will want to thank you for what you've done. Thanks aren't necessary, Miss Ames. Miss Ames told me she inherited half of the Anson Mining Company near Mesilla. Her cousin is Mel Anson, if you decide to look him up, mister. I've heard of him. I understand the Anson mine is a good one, Miss Ames. You're fortunate to own part of it. But the last I heard, it isn't doing well now. Cousin Mel, whom I've never met, wrote that it's practically worked out. I decided to come out and see for myself. Well, that's wise. I'll ride back and locate the stage driver. My Indian friend will wait for the horses until we get back. I'll give you some easy, silly big fellow. Adios. One silver. 
Lone Ranger soon came back with the disgruntled stage driver, and the stagecoach continued its journey toward Mesilla. The Lone Ranger and Tonto stood watching as it gradually faded from view down the trail. Uh, 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 why you stand watch after stage, Kimasabi? Girl with yellow hair, plenty beautiful, huh? <laughs> Me think maybe... Oh, oh, oh. I'm not thinking of her beauty, Tonto. I am thinking of what she told me about the Anson Mine. Oh. Me here, them get plenty gold from Anson Mine. She inherited half of it. And from what she says, Mel Anson wrote that the mine was about worked out. Miss Ames came from the east to find out about it. You think Anson not right truth? That's possible, Tonto. We'll try to find out more about the mine. Right now, we'll select a campsite. Easy, 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 easy. Go on, sir. Get him up, sir. Mel Anson and his young foreman, Jake Allen, were waiting when the stage arrived at the Masillo Hotel. Here's a man getting out of coach. Come on, he must oh. be Jerry. Sure glad to get here alive, yes, sir. Howdy. You must be Jerry Ames from St. Louis. No. I'm Geraldine Ames. What? Uh, you must be cousin Mel Anson. What? Holy smoke, a, a girl. Well, I, I'm Mel Anson, all right, but I thought Jerry was a man. <laughs> Everybody calls me Jerry as a nickname. Oh. For a moment, Mel and his young foreman stood looking at the beautiful young blonde girl. Her rippling golden hair and slim figure seemed to hold them spellbound. Jake gulped as Geraldine turned to him with a smile and said... I'm waiting for Cousin Mel to introduce you. Uh, oh, oh, he's my, uh, her, uh, our foreman at the mine, Jake Allen. Uh, I'm sure you're a very fine foreman, Jake. I am. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, this is a surprise, Cousin Geraldine. I, uh, well, I... I'd arrange for you to stay at my place, oh. thinking you were... Uh, oh, is... Never mind. I'll stay at the hotel. And in the morning, I'll expect you to take me to inspect the mine. After getting accommodations at the hotel, Jerry Ames went with Mel and Jake to the mining office. She was shown specially prepared books, which indicated the mine was running at a loss. It was almost dusk when she arose to leave. I'm terribly disappointed, Cousin Mel. I did hope the mine was doing fairly well. I was advised to get an accountant to go over the books. So as soon as I can locate one, I'm sure you won't object. No, not at all, not at all. There's a good accountant south of here in El Paso. You might get in touch with him. Have him come here within the next week. Well, thanks, that's what I'll do. Uh, Jake, when can I inspect the mine? Will it be all right in the morning? Oh, yes, Miss Ames, I... I reckon if Mel doesn't mind, I could come in with a buckboard and bring you out from the hotel. Never mind. I'll bring her out. Well, I can ride horseback. In fact, I like to. Well, good. I'll have a horse ready for you in the morning. After taking Jerry Ames to the hotel, Mel and Jake went into the cafe and sat at a table discussing the situation. Man alive, Mel, I never expected to see such a beautiful girl. I hate to think of cheating her out of her share like we're doing. Maybe if you let her think we found a vein, then we could Joe, get... Oh, I kind of thought you were falling for her. Now you listen to me. That girl is smart. She's liable to find out things if she gets a chance to bring in an accountant here. But you were the one who told her where to locate her. Sure. But what I didn't tell her is that she could hire the accountant from the Mesilla Bank to go over the books. It'll take some time for her to get the one from El Paso. And before that happens, well, we'll have nothing to worry about. Hey, you mean, you mean she's going to have an accident like you planned if Jerry was a man? That's right. But seeing the way you're going look over, I'm not telling you the details. But, uh, and what's more, if you warn her, I thunder, Jake, you get a bullet. Tonto, standing in the shadows, caught most of Anson's and Mel's low-voiced conversation. He waited until they had gone. Then he went out to the hitch rack and mounted. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Get him out, Scout. When he arrived at camp, Tonto told the Lone Ranger what he had heard Mel Anson say to the foreman. 
The Lone Ranger listened. Then... There's no doubt they were speaking of Miss Ames, Toto. Isn't that right? Now we know something is crooked at the mining company and that her life is endangered. Ah. Um, what do we do? First, we'll visit the mining office near the edge of town tonight. Then we'll keep an eye on the girl to protect her from the so-called accident her cousin Mel Anson plans to have happen. If we move carefully, we may see Mel Anson behind bars for embezzlement and attempted murder. All right, let's go. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It helps a guy feel confident just knowing that champions are made, not born. Otto Graham, famed quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, made himself a champ. Listen. Young Otto, on his way to fame, found football was no sissy game. Took power and speed and head work, too. And Graham learned, as champions do, that Wheaties help a guy come through. Now Otto passes for that score and still eats Wheaties even more. Otto Graham's been calling the right breakfast signal for 23 years. A big bowl of Wheaties. He-Man breakfast? There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Touchdown, Otto. Let's go, boy. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way. On his way. He's on his way. On his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Because champions are made, not for. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. Now to continue. The following morning... Mel rode with Geraldine Ames to the mining office. Oh, oh, there. Oh. Boss, I'm glad you got here. There's something I have to tell you in private. Oh, if you'll excuse us a few minutes, Cousin Geraldine. Of course. I'll wait right here. Thank you. We'll step over there and talk, Jake. Come on. Oh, what's happened, Jake? Speak up. Plenty. Somebody broke in during the night and stole both sets of books from the safe. What? It's the truth. Nothing else is missing, just the books. Oh, my sweet-looking cousin must be smarter than I thought. What do you mean by that? She must have had someone steal those books. We're sunk now. Oh, no, no, we're not. Not yet. But what can we do? Well, it stands to reason. The only one interested in those books is that girl. They're most likely in her hotel room in town. Well? I'll send one of my men to search that room right away. Now, you take her through the old tunnel and show her the worked-out mine. Aren't you coming along with us? No. I'll tell her I have important business that just come up back in town. That she's to meet me there. And then what? Well, I'll take Bill, our guard, and we'll fix the old rope bridge across the narrow canyon between here and town so it'll fall when someone on a horse starts over it. Now, see that you don't keep her more than half an hour. And let her start for town. Alone. <laughs> Among the trees in a grove which was overgrown with thick underbrush, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, who had trailed Jerry Ames and Mel to the mining office, waited and watched as Mel Anson and one of his men rode away from the office in the direction of town. At first, the masked man thought to follow them, then decided to stay in case the girl ran into trouble. Later, Jake and Geraldine Ames walked to her horse in front of the office. The girl was saying... I'm more disappointed than ever, Jake. I think I'll leave for the East in the morning. Forget the whole thing. Well, you really mean that? Yes. Oh, you've been very kind, Jake. And I'm sorry you'll likely be out of a job soon. Out of a job? Well, if the mine doesn't produce you... Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, I, I'll be sorry to see you leave, ma'am. <laughs> nice of you to say so, Jake. Well, I'll go on back to town. Maybe you... 
Pole. Maybe you might like to ride the long road. Lots of fine scenery. You no, know, I'll go the way we came. I might get lost going any other way. Steady, boy. Goodbye, Jake. Goodbye, Miss Ames. Maybe you'll come east someday. And if you do, come to see me. You really mean that? Of course. <laughs> you see, I think you're rather nice. Goodbye, Jake. Get up there. Wait up. I... Oh, she likes me. Man alive, she'll be killed when she goes over that rope bridge. But but if I warn her, they'll kill me. I... No, I can't let her die. I can't. I'll get my horse and try to catch her before she reaches that bridge. Monsieur, look. In a As the girl rode away from the mining office, the Lone Ranger and Tonto left the grove and followed her, making sure they weren't seen. Geraldine rode at a loping pace toward town. The trail wound through the hills. And before long, she rode over a hill and started down toward the approach to the rope bridge across the narrow canyon. Behind large boulders on the opposite side of the canyon, at the approach to the bridge, Mel Anson and his gun slick Bill watched as the girl appeared over the rise. Meantime, Jake, the foreman, raced along in hopes of catching Geraldine before she got to the bridge. Get! Get there! He topped the rise a short distance behind the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Jake had no time to observe the mask on one of the horsemen ahead of him. He sighted the girl approaching the bridge and shouted, Jerry! Jerry Ames! Don't go into the bridge! Stop her! She'll be killed! The bridge will fall! Stop her! Get up! Get up there! Jerry didn't seem to hear Jake's warning, but the Lone Ranger and Tuttle heard it. Tuttle, he's trying to warn the girl. Miss Ames, don't go under the bridge. Now look round, Kimasabi. Maybe you'll hear you now. I'm going after the girl. The shouting frightened her horse. She's unable to control him. Monsignor, the watch count. Geraldine's horse had taken the bet between his teeth and was galloping straight toward the rope bridge. Whoa! Whoa! Great stallion Silver moved up at a fast pace as Jerry's horse galloped rapidly toward the bridge. Realizing the girl's danger and that trying to grasp the runaway's bridle might make matters worse, the masked man called, I'll lift you from the saddle. Be ready. I have you. The masked man pulled Silver to a quick stop. Hold him, hold. But Geraldine's horse ran on to the bridge. A moment later. Oh, the bridge, David. You'll reach me just in time. You're safe now. I'll put you down. Thank you. Miss Ames, I followed to tell you not to go over that bridge. Oh. As Jake started to speak, a rifle shot rang out from across the narrow canyon, and he fell from his horse. A rifle shot came from the other side. Look, two riders go from behind boulders. They're within range. Use your guns, Tonto. Both fall from horses, Kimasabi. Yes, we'll see it. A group of horsemen are stopping near them. Sheriff and men. You over there. Wait where you are. He's got the long road to the other bridge and join you. We'll bring these men with us. We'll wait, Sheriff. Jake is badly wounded. Hello, we'll give him first aid. He is seriously wounded. Uh-huh. Jake, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I hear you. I, I tried to warn you. Your cousin Mel. He and his gun sex, they, they shot me. Said they would if... If I... <coughs> easy, fella, easy. Jake, what was it all about? Briefly and hesitatingly, the foreman told all that had taken place. <coughs> that, that's how it was, Miss Ames. Mine is a rich one. We tried to cheat you. <coughs> but you... You were so beautiful... Sweetie, if things had been different... Don't, I... don't try to talk, Jake. And this is for what you did for me. Oh, gosh. You, you kissed me. <coughs> Jerry, if things had only been different... Ah. Uh, uh, is, is he? Yes, Miss Ames. 
It was kind of you to treat him as you did. Oh, poor Jake. I, I just can't believe that it was Cousin Mel who shot him. We'll know when the sheriff and his men arrive. Later, the sheriff and his men pull to a stop. Mel and Bill, with their wounds crudely bandaged, were with them. Hey, good morning, Misty. Hey, good morning. What happened here? We saw the bridge crash and heard the shooting. Anybody get down with the bridge? A horse, Sheriff, but no people. The masked man saved me. I was on that horse until he neared the bridge. We were heading for the mine office to talk to Mel Anson. Uh, Mel Anson, the man with him, were the ones who caused that bridge to fall. They shot Jake Allen because he tried to warn Miss Ames. It was Cousin Mel. Yes, he planned your death as you learned from Jake. Just what did Jake tell you, Miss Ames? Briefly, the girl related what Jake had told them. She finished by asking... But why were you going to talk to Cousin Mel? Well, you see, ma'am, last night the masked man came to my office and identified himself. He brought two sets of books from the mine office. Two sets of books? That's right. The bank accountant is going over them now. But just from glancing through them before I left, he said he could tell by certain entries in each set that Mel Anson was keeping phony books just to make out the mine company wasn't paying off. Well, we'll get Mel and his gun slick to jail. Well, they'll be charged with murder. My men will take Jake back, too. Uh, you'd better join us, Miss Ames. Then you'll know you'll be safe from now on. All right, Sheriff. I'll ride with you. Uh, Sheriff, Tonto and I are leaving for Texas today. Next time we come into your territory, we'll stop to see you. Right. I'll be staying in Mathilda to run the mining company. I... Well, I... I wish I could find a... a man I could trust to help me run it. I'm sure you will, Miss Ames. It's been nice knowing you. We'll see you again. Easy, steady, big fellow. Easy, steady. Adios, everybody. Where are you? Get him up. Sheriff, who is he? He's so handsome and, and brave. Uh-huh. And why does he wear that mask? With the way he lifted me bodily from the saddle. Uh, no, hold on, ma'am. I can tell how you feel about the masked man. He's a real man and a true American who does what he can to keep law and order in the West. But uh, you'll have to look elsewhere for him. Well, the man you're looking for, you see... He's none other than the Lone Ranger. I'll Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope the steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You know about Cheerios. How good Cheerios taste. And how this wonderful toasted oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O is so good for you. A Cheerios and milk breakfast really starts the day right. It's real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. They help to give you healthy nerves and muscles. So have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. A copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger. 
adventure is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>